Hi guys, how's the quarantine going? I hope you are all well and safe. This week's video is going to be a little different from usual uh, because we're going to talk about a potential component change that will affect all my future projects. So as you probably guessed from the thumbnail, we're going to talk about the H-bridge. An H-bridge is basically a component that has four transistors that allows me to drive my coil. So far I have been using the DRV8837 which is actually a fully integrated driver, not just four transistors. This also includes a gate driver for the MOSFETs and some other internal protection features. So it actually has all the things that we need, but there's one thing that I'm not happy about. My main projects involve PCB actuators and the main idea behind them is to make a cheaper actuator. But the things that needs to drive them also needs to be cheap, so I need to get its price down. The DRV8837 costs around 79 cents for 100 pieces and 52 cents for more than 1000. This probably doesn't seem a lot to you guys, but if I want to make like a kit, it will add up to the base price. So after a little bit of electronics hunting, I managed to find the one because this PAM8016 from Diodes Incorporate um, only cost 24 cents for 100 pieces and 14 cents for 1000. This chip is actually listed as a haptic driver, but it's basically the same thing. It has an H bridge with a gate driver that can be controlled single-ended or differentially, and it also has thermal, under voltage and short circuit protection. So I made this little table to try and compare its main specs to the DRV8837, um, but basically the only difference is that it is rated at a lower voltage, um, which for us is actually a don't care because we want to power it with a maximum of 5 volts. The downside is its RDS on because it's around 2 times higher and um, this is going to create a voltage drop of around 100 millivolts. Now its power rating is not 100% clear in the data sheet because this table is all we have and this is just defined by these examples. But if we assume this 1 kHz frequency has a 50% duty cycle, the power can be calculated using this equation. If we take the 4 ohms load as an example, we would get around 3 watts, which matches the data sheet. So I'm going to assume that this 3 watts is its true maximum power. For my application, the coil will have a resistance of around 17 ohms, so with a 50% duty cycle square wave, we will be operating at 0.74 watts, but the worst case condition is 100% continuous power, which I calculated to be 1.47 watts. This is half the maximum rating, therefore I think it should be okay, but the best thing is to try it out. So I decided to buy a reel of 100, which only cost me $24, and take a look at how small this is. Its package only measures 1.5 by 1.5 mm, and this is how it compares to the old driver. To test it, I decided to make a quick prototype, and given that this flexible PCP was just to test this new device, I tried to have a little fun and get artistic with the silk screen. This was actually inspired from one of Greg Davil's PCBs. If you don't know who he is, I highly recommend you check out his Twitter. But anyway, this silk screen effect makes PCBs more fun to look at. I got this prototype made at PCB Way, and here's the final result. If we zoom in, there are some parts where the silk screen looks inconsistent, but this can barely be detected with the human eye. So now let's solder the driver so that we can start flapping our flap. So I have flashed some software to try it out, let's power it up, so it's running around 100 milliamps, there it is. Great, so our flap works, but now we still need to verify that the driver is working as expected. So let's start by monitoring the output signals. That's quite clean, let's check the other one. 
perfect. Now something that I noticed by mistake is that if one of the input pins goes floating, the output signal gets messed up. So that's around 500 kilohertz. I think the chip has some internal oscillator that affects it. But this can be easily solved with some pull up resistors on the inputs. Now for the next test I connected the inputs, one to the supply and one to ground. So that we can monitor the voltage drop on each MOSFET. So on the P channel we have around 70 millivolts and the N channel has 36 millivolts. This confirms the values in the data sheet. At this constant power the device is not getting that hot, but as a final check I'm going to increase the voltage to 5 volts and to monitor its temperature. Okay, so it's been around 10 minutes now and the temperature stayed around 32 degrees Celsius. Um, I think this is very good considering that we're powering it with 5 volts. So based on all these test results and considering all the advantages that it has, I think I will be using this driver in a lot more projects. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. Bye!